Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. I am joined by Lou Jimenez and our good friend of the show, Riel. I just want to say that I've been looking forward to this since I reached out to Lou and said, hey, can we do this? Because I am a huge, huge fan of Lou's show, The Unidentified Celebrity Review. Um, Mr. Jimenez has had people on, such as Lou Elizondo's father, uh, people like all, um, ex-CIA John Ramirez, uh, who whose uh, video on his channel is went viral and is still going viral from my understanding. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Lou, thank you so very much, sir, for coming on. How are you today? Yeah, I'm great, man. Thanks for having me, Dave. Zio, thank you. Well, first off, let's, um, let's jump in. Let's jump right down the rabbit hole, if that's cool. If I, I'd yeah. love to ask your perspective on the current uh, situation on uh, UFO Twitter. For those that aren't too familiar with listening or watching, UFO Twitter is a highly active uh, community on Twitter or sub community that focuses on UFOs and all that. And of course, ET proving the existence. It's it, it seems like very unfortunately there's more there's been a lot of tribalism a lot of infighting which then begs the question if if again and I'm not one to to have the solution but if if we cannot simply find a common ground in general these beings may look at that and go hold on are we even ready so for disclosure so I'd love to get your perspective on that um yeah i mean it's natural we're human we tend to be tribal about everything Mm. Our sports, the food we eat, the way we vote. Um, so it doesn't surprise. I didn't know there was this much. I mean, look, I'm also, I'm really starting to get to the uh, convinced to a point where it's really just a handful of people. And it seems like a handful of people or, or it seems like a lot more because they're so loud and just rude and, and nasty. Um, mm. I most, for most times I ignore it. Every once in a while, I'll snap back at it. Right. You know, um, I'm only human. I can only just see so much like underhanded comments and people just not coming to me and telling me their issues or trying to talk to me first before they backhandedly sort of talk smack about you. Do you do you think a common ground could be found in general? And I say that more so referencing people that, you know, don't believe Lou Elizondo, believe Stephen Greer, vice versa, that whole at Christopher Mellon, Mick West. Well, yeah. Do you think that's... we can all find a common ground as corny as that may sound? But no, dude, that's what the big phone home is, is the common ground. It's a tent that everybody can get under. Um, I vehemently disagree with a lot of people in this community. Um, but at the end, I hate it saying at the end of the day, God, I, I too late. I already said it. <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, we're all going to have to get under the same tent if we want substantive change. Right. Um, and at least find common ground, common bread on something. And for me, that's something I think is demanding more, asking for more, asking for more seriousness, asking for more transparency asking for science, um, asking for more um, patience, you know, um, especially with the experiencer aspect of things. I mean, yeah, that's, um, you know, that would be, the, I guess, the, the first thing. <laughs> right. How right. much of, uh, how much of UFO Twitter do you find authentic? Like, do you, who who started UFO Twitter? It did was that no at the idea. same time as like a raid Area Fifty One? It just some um, like controlled opposition. Man, I think it came about around uh, the seventeenth of December or to the sixteenth of December in twenty seventeen, when the New York Times article came out. I think that's when that hashtag started manifesting. I'm not hundred percent sure because I just got into it last year, and so I naively came into this going, "Hey, everybody." <laughs> you know, I know you disagree with Bob Lazar. I, you know, I let's say I agree with Bob Lazar. Or I believe or whatever. Okay, so we disagree there, but we can, I think, agree that our government has more and there's no reason we should at least try and ask for it. We've never done that before. We've never galvanized as a community and asked for something. You know, we're always... I feel like a lot of people in this community apologize a lot, especially people that are doing good work and they get bullied or talked into not trying to monetize their work. 
you know, like, I think that's where a lot of this stems um, for some, for some of these guys that are just angry. They're just angry UFO Twitter. There's it, but it's a small, it's a really small percentage of people. Mm. So spe- speaking of which to transition from that towards what you said about asking for more speaking, mm-hmm. speaking of asking for more, uh, before we started recording, we had just spoke about uh, off the record about what Jacques Vallée had coined gifting fields where he yeah. believes he had some uh, proposed that some of these beings actually deliberately crash certain craft on purpose to give to our species. So you had brought up a very interesting point uh, about, you know, if they're so uh, your, your whole I guess, quote unquote, issue with crashes, uh, not to put words in your mouth. Could you elaborate on that, if that's cool? Yeah, that's what, um, basically it was just, you know, this idea if there, if the machine has the capability of transversing star systems uh, in, say, a, a very short relative time, whatever that means. I mean, you know, again, like you, <laughs> the problem with skipping star systems is that you get here if you're here for two minutes maybe a hundred years 200 years have passed where you left from so what are you going back to so what's coming here is it intelligence or is it artificial intelligence it, but either way if they could if they have the ability to make craft that could do this um it doesn't make any sense to me that they would crash it doesn't make any sense to me that they would malfunction i feel like um uh a nanotechnology would be able to fix say a broken pipe or uh, whatever whatever you know system they use or energy systems that they use whatever wiring would would need to 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 harness that kind of energy um you know if something broke on it i feel like that type of intelligence would have backup plan after backup plan after backup plan after backup plan at the ready like ready to go and implement um so right you know, to, to have a spaceship, <laughs> you know, come all that way and just fall into the ground. I don't know. It just seems, it seems unlikely, but you know, it is mechanical. I mean, I suppose it's, it's, it's possible if it's mechanical, uh, if it is mechanical. Right. Right. That we'll get to that uh, shortly, but Riel, you want to jump in? Yeah, well, well, that's, you know, this is assuming that these crafts are actually from space. And mm-hmm. I, I can't name specific sources, but there's the idea is that a lot of these crafts are military craft, advanced mm-hmm. military craft, and maybe they're advanced military craft that they've been testing out and they haven't perfected it yet. Or there's the idea that these crafts have been shot down by uh, technology that, that humans actually have, and they perceived it as a threat. And what are your thoughts on those possibilities? Um, I mean, so, sorry, can I, yeah. uh, sorry, brother, uh, to add to what Riel said, incorporating the fact that you've interviewed people like John Ramirez and all of that, mm-hmm. does that add a layer of, okay, there's something more here? Because again, people like Mr. Ramirez are, are speaking to you on this? Well, I think it's, first of all, all of that. <laughs> you know like yeah. i think it's all of that i think it's military tech part of it's military tech okay part of it could be non-human intelligence okay like the diamond in the rough part of it could be an intelligence that's already among us and just able to pop in and out of the four dimensions that we operate in right um part of it could be uh space travel you know um it could be i think it's a it could be a little bit of all of those things and it, and i have a feeling that no matter whose theory if is thrown out there it's going to be so much different than anybody could possibly think of like i think it's going to be like how do you explain a a tiger shark to somebody who's never seen the ocean it's incomprehensible right yeah. you know right. like how would you go look at i, I would love to some i can't remember who told me to do this experiment i think it was chris cogswell yeah it was chris cogswell uh, from mad scientist podcast and i i love this go look at um like 14th century paintings of cats 
you know, and like okay. what people interpreted, what artists interpreted from descriptions of what, what cats were when they were traveling the world. And they were coming back with these stories of all these different animals that they saw. And then the artists would paint something off of the description and they look like absolute monsters, you know, but like you can see aspects of it. They're like, oh, okay, I see the cat. I see where it is there in right. like the toes or something, you know, or the, you know, but like, uh, or the way it stands, um, you know, but other, but the faces were hilarious. Like, I mean, and you could do that with all of any animal. And so, you know, it's, it's tough, man. That's why witness testimony is, is, and the interpretation of that witness testimony is, it's really difficult to rely on. You know, it's why we've got to ask for more substantive proof that Speaking can convince people like everyday people. Right. Speaking of witness testimony, whether it's civilian, military, you name it. Um, what is the, um, and I was going to ask you right after this too, your, if you'd be willing to share your, what experience you've had personally, but what is the thing or concept or proposal, regardless, whether it's in UFO Twitter or otherwise that you've least been sold on the thing you've been sold on the least. Um, it's a good question. Ooh. Sorry, I, I, I didn't. It's mean almost to... like I got it. No, no, no. It's like I got to think of it. But I, you know, I feel like anything I answer, people are going to have. There's a couple things that I almost want to say all of it. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> right, as right. I'm going through, it's like all of it. Like I, 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 there's not one that I put past more untruthful or less untruthful I, at least i try not to i do have favorite cases i have do have favorite testimonies and videos um and hmm, like for, I'm for least sold about i mean like yeah. what, what is it for you well it, my thing would be like for example uh not least sold but what i was going to add to sort of maybe help uh clarify is when we mm. look for example at the 2001 national press club conference where you had yeah. uh, i think it was over 400 vets I, again to the audience yeah. listening or watching think what you will of greer i got to give him credit where it's due yeah. for assembling that uh personally mm. but when you see that it, it, again i think we're just short of, again, a, a, like, you know, a, one alien, a gray walking on stage, so to speak. And even then people still wouldn't believe it. So yeah. this is that thing, right? Because there's that argument being made that soft disclosure has already happened, right? Like, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, disclosure to a point has happened. I mean, I feel like, you know, the onus is on now the military and the government to prove that these things are not real. Right. You know, like that's like if this is just misreporting or misinterpretation or even, you know, I think that there's also a real world scare. And this is this is you know, part of like my pitch for the big phone home. Like, you know, when you're calling a senator or a congressman, like, you know, these could be drones made in somebody's garage that mm. has an extreme view and that he could swarm together because the technology is commercially available now. So if you get 20 drones over, you know, I don't know, Santa Monica Pier or LAX or, you know, the, the Hollywood, uh, you know, Boulevard on a movie premiere. Right. Um, you know, it could be a really, really terrifying uh, reality that could easily come true like there, there there is an aspect of this where you've got either spies or terrorist cells that are making drones that look weird on purpose and right. literally the cost of the drone is a couple of hundred dollars but they attach you know <laughs> eighty thousand dollars worth of spying equipment or even yeah. more onto it and nobody reports it because nobody wants to get the stigma or demoted or you know not get that raise that they were looking for especially if it's in a military base setting you know like people like these things are there and they need 
to be reported. And the only way that happens is if the stigma is lifted. And so the more Alex Dietrichs, the more David Fravers uh, start coming out, you know, Ryan Graves and talk about it as much as they can. So they can tell their fellow pilots, like it's okay to report this stuff. Like you're, you, the law now says you're allowed to report it without fear of getting uh, reprimanded or demoted or, or whatever they used to do in the past. So you know, it's okay, let's start talking about it. And and I'm hoping that inspires more pilots of that caliber and 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 people in those high ranks. You know, these are commanders. Right. These are people <laughs> trusted to defend the 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 West. These are people yeah. that are trained to fly a in some cases a billion dollar jet and they have the permission and the psychological testing to Fire. flip a switch and 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 end life like it's a very right. serious responsibility and so when they you know no offense to the local fishermen because i think the the eyewitness testimony of local fishermen is also incredibly important but right. in the context of disclosure i think it's gonna have to come from something like that <laughs> you know something super official that cannot be denied because it's so normally such a serious mm. aspect of the workings of, you know, international and national affairs. Like, right. it's, it's, yeah. it's like, come on, man. Like, uh, well, uh, speaking of which of, of, like you said, Alex uh, Dietrich and, and, you know, Commander Fravor and all, and all these coming out um, for, you know, Ramirez coming out as well in that regard. Um, obviously with the, the air force commanders seeing things compared to, you know, free, uh, excuse me, Ramirez. You know what? Let me answer your question real quick. My least favorite. It just sure. Sure. Like please. Yeah, up. sure. I'd say the alien human hybrid theory. Least favorite or the, least the, believable, the, the least believable. Okay. Okay. For me. Sure. Sure. I want to follow you know? up with you on that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the re actually Sorry, just, just thought of it. I no, no, no. That, that's fantastic. Um, the, Okay, so do you now no we're getting John Ramirez, by the way, <laughs> no, no uh, I'm not here to speak for him. So I won't say anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't mean that as a knock. I'm just like, that's hard for me to believe. Sure, sure. Saying, Ab absolutely. You know? I, I just want to clarify. That. Absolutely. Um, now we're going to get into speculative territory here. Uh, yeah. But Ross had said, uh, I, I believe it was to you, in addition to Kurt Jaimungle on Theory of Everything, that it ha and not just Ross, but other journalists are saying they've been be they're being fed information from intelligence sources, whether it's Australia, UK, uh, Canada, the US, that we may actually be on borrowed time. That ours that some of this is actually uh, time travelers from us from the future in some cases coming mm. back. Now, do you? S I I don't want to say believe, but not to be a smart ass here, but do you yeah. ideologically subscribe potentially to something like that? No, I don't subscribe to anything. Okay. You know, like right. I'm not trying to subscribe to anything. Like I said, it could be all of this, Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I like, right. I, I don't hate the idea. I think it's fun to think about, mm -hmm. but I always come back to, well, if they're coming back in time, you know, if you know anything about how our solar system works, it's traveling in a in in a line, essentially, while planets rotate around the center of that line. The center of that line is the sun. It's literally moving through space and time as we rotate around it. It's like a bullet right. Right. that's got a whole bunch of rotating planets around it. Um, to come back in time you would also have to come back in space. Okay. I mean, that it's just a difficult concept for me to yeah. think about. Like, that means that you, you would have to have the capability of not just reversing time, but you would have to have the planet in the exact same spot it was at the exact same time that that event happened. Not just the planet, but the sun, the other planets, the other star systems in the entire universe. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like that's what space tr time travel is. It's not just like, like, I don't think people think of time, people think of time travel and they think of obviously, you know, back to the future and sure. And, and, but it's, it's, 
that's the biggest hurdle of time travel is that you have to be able to also reverse space time not just time space sure time. so with with that being said what what's your personal perspective on uh Dr. Eric Davis's, you know, uh, traversable wormholes or teleportation reports that he wrote, I think, 2003, 2004. We now see recently uh, he was on the basement office with uh, Mr. Greenstreet. Um, there's that mm. deleted scene that is still uh, circulating on the, the interwebs out there of Eric Davis saying he can't comment on the right. Wilson uh, uh, Davis memo there. What do you think of that when you have, for example, I'm, I'm only I'm, I'm trying to push back in a respectful way in the sense yeah, no, of, but, yeah, uh, please, right, yeah. for the sake of healthy conversation um when when Der eric davis says in that deleted scene with green street look there's a lot of people out there in the academic community that are grew up in a very religious cult-like fashion and davis seems to not cross the line of admitting this is science uh, actual factual science in terms of teleportation wormholes he seems to just approach it and then he goes no comment you see so if they're I'm not saying with respect to time travel, but wormholes, all of that, if there was absolutely nothing there, don't you think he would say there's nothing or could even be an intelligence op of, you know, I mean, that's the problem. I mean, that's why I, you know, I feel, I feel like a lot of uh, contention in the community is around this Eric Wilson Davis document. Right. Um, I wouldn't take this story to a Senator. I wouldn't take this story to a friend uh, to convince them that this topic is real. That's sure. the that's the issue I have with it. It's too complicated to truly understand. Like it, it it's the problem with Eric Davis saying stuff like that is that he's got no scientific aspects to it. There's no science that he's pointing to that says, look at this. If this is true, then this idea of them coming through wormholes or whatever the theory is, is true, mm. you know, and, and he's just as a respected scientist is just throwing theories out there, but I don't think he's prefacing it hard enough with, Hey, this is a theory or this is, um, you know, this is just what I, I think could be going on, um, you know, because there's, I don't think there's a lab anywhere in the United States they are studying wormholes, but I, I mean, you know, we have we found wormholes yet? I know we found black holes. Right. I, I don't know, know off the top of my head, so I don't want to say. On that note, what do you think about CERN? Because some say that CERN is opening up uh, portals or stargates, wormholes, which are uh, interchangeable terms. I mean, prove it. Fair, fair enough. Fair. You know, yeah, prove fair. it. Prove it um show me the experiment um and i think that's that's the standard now is show right. me the experiment show me the proof man i don't i'm tired of conjecture and stories they're fun right they're, <laughs> they're fun. fun to talk about and that's why i i i take the topics as seriously as i can but i definitely don't don't take myself seriously because this is this topic is just all conjecture. There's no 100% right. bulletproof stuff. There's stuff that's really close, you know, like the eyewitness testimony of again, Fravor, Dietrich, and Graves. Uh, yep. The three videos I think are compelling, but they're clearly not enough to sway the entire world right you know what i mean yeah. like that's yeah. what we're looking for that's what we need if okay. we want to really have a definitive conversation on this and i think that's where i think i think what's happening is science is starting to catch up to this idea sure and it be more accepting yes right big time and you see it in uh the galileo project you see it in U uapx you see it um uh there, there was a couple others scu um they the, these serious um academic centric programs that are looking for funds to look at this topic in a very serious way and they think they can find something that's the thing right. is the sky is not classified anybody's right. allowed to look at it and so i think what's that what's happening is that that effort is only going to get bigger. Right. And it's going to put pressure on the other apparatus, which is the government. Right. <laughs> which probably has a lot of data on this 
but I'm, I am in the, I don't want to say belief, but I am in the sort of thought process of that. The government has a lot more data. Somebody has seen a myriad of stuff that would convince lawmakers, yeah. the general public, a president, a sitting president, other foreign dignitaries. I feel like that data is somewhere to be seen. Um, but the problem is, is that they don't have the answers to answer what that data means, where it comes okay. from, how it gets here. Like they truly would not be able to sit down in a press conference and and, yeah. and answer questions, because I think it would frustrate it would. First of all, it would frustrate them as an intelligence community sure. to not have answers on this. And then it would also frustrate the people listening being like what do you mean you don't have any especially answers on this if i could you've add especially been taxing us mm. for 70 years yeah. you've been neglecting yeah. us you've been marginalizing us you've been making fun of us you've been poking at us and now all of a sudden you want to say it's real but you don't have the answers are you bleeping kidding me well, like i think it yeah. would it would be it'd be bad <laughs> could, it, be could bad. it could it be that could be. You, could it be that be inadvertently i and ironically or unironically enough in this topic once you find something out that you can solidify it then leads to even more questions which again there's that whole thing of you know the truth and reconciliation commission as ross mm -hmm. coltard met that whole thing there but i did want to just go back very quickly what you just said right there thank you so much for that if we apply that to the dr eric davis say a uh, teleportation report that he wrote in 2003 2004 Essentially, and I'm not asking out of bad faith, genuinely asking what you would want is you're asking essentially, Lou, is you would want to see the math, the science behind it. You would want to see Mr. Davis write out in that report the materials needed, the type of laboratory needed. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying I want to see a peer review paper on it. Okay. And I want to see scientists come out in public and say, holy shit, yeah, this paper's incredible. This is, this is paradigm shifting. I, I think we have to, it has to come from science, it has to come from uh, levels of our government, as much as people hate to hear that. Um, I think it has to be a conjoined thing. And so what I think is happening, and again, this is speculation, but what I think is happening is that there's a public and private effort to look at this, and there's some serious dollars starting to be thrown. And I'm going to try and get even more serious dollars thrown at it. I think through the next big phone home, I think we're going to ditch the pol the political aspect of it and and just concentrate on particularly Elon Musk, like being able to present this idea of the Galileo project is saying, listen, for $100 million, we can get a, de a definitive scientific answer on whether or not something is in our skies that's being intelligently controlled. And you could be the guy that does that uh, for a, a small investment of a, as, as crazy as it sounds, $100 million. Um, right, right. You know, like, like, I think with that, it's pressuring the government to be like, okay, they're going to eventually find this. We found it yeah. with their, the, the sensors and the capabilities of how we found it are now commercially available. Someone eventually is going to figure out the right combination to look at these things whenever the hell they want. And I think when that happens, that's when you're going to see you know, I think it's partly maybe why we we're starting to see a brand new UAP office being formed. I think this is why you're starting to see laws being written, because uh, because I think they are preparing for this moment in the next decade where it's going to be someone like the a public or private effort like the Galileo Project or even like Elon Musk on accident is going to catch something with his satellite dishes, his camera systems that he now has up there that he owns every piece of. And I'm sure there may be wouldn't shock me if a part of SpaceX is looking at this stuff on some kind of level, um, because I think that's why we we're having such a people think it's a negative reaction from Elon Musk. I'm just like, I understand where he's coming from. He spent almost a trillion dollars on his own space system to going to Mars and he's going to get there. And right. as far as he can tell with his toys, he hasn't seen any UFOs yet. Nothing's come across his camera systems. Nothing has blown up one of his rockets or, you know, interfered with his launch. Sure. Yeah. So so I can understand why his his viewpoint on this phenomenon is like, yeah, I don't I don't think there's anything to it.
when he says he's um, seen no evidence right now uh, i did w- with that being said um mm-hmm. again speculative territory but yeah. do you think that a lot of this uh, again maybe it's just me i i gather the observation that a lot of this is not in a bad way but it's being rushed relative to since the new york times article came out in 2017 do you think that this rush if you will galileo project all of this could again speculative territory but could be because we our species has been given a sort of deadline if you will from a non-human species saying listen it's time to sharpen up with respect mm-hmm. to taking care of the planet and yada yada you got to do this we're not giving you a choice i think again speculative territory <clears throat> i think you don't need an entity interfering with uh, an apparatus such as our military agencies to know that something catastrophic is going to come in regards to the planet and how we are handling it. Right. <laughs> like right. if you don't think that there's already military operations to secure certain military bases or assets or move assets to higher ground because they know that this is coming. Um, You don't need people from the future to come tell you that. Like there's enough data already provided for them to come to that determination. Is is this why the John Ramirez, sorry to interrupt. Is this why the John Ramirez hybrid uh, proposal is, is, is a bit of a sticky issue for you to grapple with? Yeah, it is, you know, because it's just like, Look, and and it, we're going to get into this some more because John Ramirez is coming back and we're also going to have Jesse Springer on there, too. Um, oh, nice. And so it'll be fun. Um, but I want to get into this idea of how is it possible for, let's say, even an intern or, you know, looking at a genome in a lab somewhere, you know, that looks at something and goes, hey, wait a second this is we like if some if something intelligent interfered with our dna or gene pool i feel like there'd be a trace of it that every person looking at our dna would be able to find this was that Pretty part quickly. of the conversation when you guys were pressing Mr. Ramirez a little bit on yeah. the right. Yeah. And, and I also don't think that, and I could be wrong. And if I am, please point me to the scientific papers that were written in fifties that were able to break down our DNA. Right. You know, like what it looked like, how, how you know we still don't even know the entire we haven't discovered i believe there's still we haven't discovered every gene in our dna if i'm not mistaken genetic makeup is it 97 percent of all of our dna junk yeah it just (laughs) yeah it's just it's you know it's like a primordial soup of the universe you know and and i think it's like in a lot of regards, we're very, very special to have intelligence, to be able to have these thoughts and ideas and communicate with each other. But at the same time, I feel like every aspect you look at in the nature, every single one, it repeats itself. Nature has yeah. a very, it's very, it's, it's literally only purpose is to repeat itself over and over so, and over and everything and everything right so i wouldn't shock me if there was another humanoid species really similar to us if not almost the exact same okay wouldn't surprise me if there was you know 14 different dimensions that have different versions of myself in this conversation you know wouldn't happen wouldn't shock me if Lou Elizondo's sort of cigarette analogy where the the cherry the, the right where you know the the smoker inhales and that cherry lights up and part of it is lit. And the other part isn't lit. And you've got all of these things firing at once. That's time. It's just the cherry. And so it's all happening. All of it is happening right now. Hence you know, entanglement. And, you know, exactly. And it just, it's, it's complicated. It's a beautiful That's why shit I think show. <laughs> it's yeah. It's going to be a lot stranger and a lot more complex than things are getting in a spaceship coming to our planet right and collecting resources 
what no like, I, I agree you, you could go to a meteoroid and get whatever resource you want like or an asteroid rather you, you know you, you can mine all sorts of things in space you don't have to come all the way to planet earth to find gold so i'm really happy I'm by the way uh, real brother sorry we'll get to you in a quick sec i'm really happy you brought up elizondo because i was actually going to uh, transition to that so when he has those things of you know like um when he said seventy thousand years ago that soliloquy he did um, he goes you know just let's pretend everything you've been taught is inverted per incorrect the whole thing do you what parallels do you draw with that with you know again the literature saying not just in the ufo community but in that seventy thousand year, years ago we our dna was messed with and then someone like lou says that it, I, i'm very curious to hear your perspective because of your take on mr ramirez's mm. hybrid uh, again i don't know mm. like i did i don't know i just have a hard time believing that do you do you, you know? lean I, do you lean in a certain way if i may ask i lean toward it i guess if i had to pick it if i had to bet in, in a in a ufo casino <laughs> um, i i would bet no mm. i think i think again like we are primordial soup that has come together and again, like this is not to say that this phenomenon is not real. Right? Right. That's why I say right. it could be all of these things. Um, and here's the thing. Maybe I'm wrong on that. <laughs> you know, maybe I put my chips on the wrong color and I lose on that. And if I do, awesome. <laughs> let's talk about alien hybrids all fucking day. I don't care. Right, like, right. let's do it. Like, all I want is what did i see when i was 13 years old at a birthday party like that's i want an answer to that and because it's it's perplexed me my entire life like for me i don't need the video or the proof i've already seen it i would just like other people to have that wonder the exact same thing i had happen to me sort of go through their conscious and their reality you know, I, I feel like everybody should know, <laughs> like, right. you know, something, something's there. I don't know what it is, but something is there. So, but, you know, wouldn't shock me. I mean, look, like when we look at the pyramids and you look at the Sphinx, um, you know, and they're starting to realize that, or they haven't started. This is, this has been pretty much proven, but, but you know modern day archaeology i think is still fighting it this idea that these structures are a lot older yeah and just ten thousand years old i mean like it wouldn't shock me if they're you know in the millions <laughs> like right. it wouldn't shock me if there was already a system in place that just got wiped out by a major asteroid and the remnants of that civilization um i mean well started a new one are you are you right are you referring to again a lot of these unexplained structures that have been so precisely yeah, cut dude. that even yeah. our modern tech can't yeah. Do, yeah i yeah. i the thing i hate about the ancient aliens theory and like a comedian friend of mine said this i thought it was funny they're like it's the most racist shit ever like it just it just it's <laughs> like for some it just tells people that brown people couldn't figure out laser cutting technology so aliens they couldn't, did it so aliens did it like oh, we rather yeah. <laughs> believe aliens did it than brown people and i was like dude that's so damn oh funny. that's but um that's, and it's kind of it's funny because it's true right you right. know like yeah that's why i don't put anything past you obviously we're doing stuff like that today Right. Who said that somebody did we didn't have a civilization that figured that out? I mean, dude, this planet is so old. Yeah. Like when you hear Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about how from the Big Bang to right now, the human civilization, just uh, from us standing upright and understanding fire, um to right now would be less than a tenth of a second. Yes. On the drop of the New Year's Eve ball in New York if you City. Scale, if you it, scale it. If you yeah. scale it, you know? Yeah. Like we're such an insignificant part of the entire story. Um, would not shock me if, okay. if there was the, civilization right. things that now, were able to, uh, to build such great to, structures. Great. But did it differently. Maybe they didn't have a steam engine. Maybe they didn't have... Uh, radio or you know jet propulsion or gasoline maybe they did it differently in a ufo 
in in a UFO casino, or maybe this has nothing to do with aliens. Mm. Would you say that we are a species that's been on the been hit on the head with amnesia? Oh yeah, an asteroid right. will do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. everything that was ever written, said, um, talked about, thought of, schemed, ended in a blink of an eye, and only a little tiny portion of right. it, you know, and they surmise in africa where it has the largest species of every animal or the largest uh, the the widest range of species is in africa um life essentially i think pretty much agreed everybody agrees it came from africa um so when shot and some of the highest places on the planet are in africa it's a huge continent it would be incredibly difficult and even with the biggest of asteroids to cover that whole continent in water um so when you wouldn't shock me if it all came from there so when you look at, for example, the work of Graham Hancock, Randall mm-hmm. Carlson, I'm I, just for the record, for those watching or listening, I'm not trying to constantly jab back at Lou. I'm only asking yeah. for the sake of healthy debate. Are you jabbing? No, no, I'm not trying to jab. Dave's just very, <laughs> Dave's overly I'm, Canadian. Quit being I'm Canadian. so sensitive. Yeah, quit being <laughs> I'm, so Canadian. I'm Canadian, man. <laughs> yeah, just so, ask the question. These aren't, it's not like you're asking me like, you know. <laughs> What was your, you know, what would your love mother it. do to you I to love make it. you so messed up? That's awesome. Uh, Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson, when you listen yeah. to things like that, so particularly the two times they've been on Joe Rogan, uh, yeah. again, not saying that they're, that they're, I don't believe they're saying it's aliens that caused any of this. Yeah. They're just saying the evidence is there to suggest so and so. Do you, how seriously do you take things like that and seeing that? Do you, did yeah. they say that aliens, that they theorize that aliens caused this? They they did, but I'm trying to park that for a second and, and focus mm. on the, the 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 evidence that Mr. Hancock and Carlson have gathered that is that mainstream media academics say con- is total nonsense. You know what yeah, I mean? I I I tend to believe that there's and we see this in UAPs. Um, mm. You see this in a lot of aspects of life where people are already making a living. Oil industry, for example already making a living on something that they known and perfected for the last 120 years. Mm. You know, we found the pyramids. We figured it out. This is when they were made. This is who lived in them. We even made a song. Check it out. <laughs> you know, and then you've got yeah. professors that write books and write uh, and get tenure. And because they followed this this ideology and then it, before you know it it becomes something that can't be questioned yes and i think that's where it gets into an unhealthy place because i think if you go to egypt and you talk to egyptians mm. especially the ones that work around the pyramid like give tours and there's you know people always think of the pyramids there's like other museums where they have uh, antiquities from you know you know marble cut you know, uh, tops of these pyramids. Some of them were lathered in gold. Right. Um, you know, the tip of these pyramids um, that survived the, you know, the however many years of pillaging and and robbing uh, of these ancient monuments. Yeah. And you know, you 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 ask them, these things are way older than ten thousand years old way old way those older, people right? live there yeah you know? yeah um they 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 live and breathe some of those folks that they, they take a lot of pride in this is where i'm from this is you know the pyramids are like something that they are incredibly proud of um you know i wish they would open it up more because i think if they opened it more and i am and i understand why they don't open it more because as soon as you do you know it's not yours. And then all of a sudden somebody else owns the pyramids, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and so I can understand why they're super protective of it. Um, but at the same time, like we need to unearth what the hell is, I mean, to think that just what we see is maybe only less than 1% of the entire structure that could be sitting under the Sahara. Right. Um, <sighs> Uh, well, OK, sorry, I, I, I did want to give Riel a chance to ask uh, his couple yeah. questions. Then I, I got a few more for you, if that's cool. Yeah, uh, Riel, cool. brother, you want to jump in? Sure. Thanks. Uh, so with uh, you, uh, Lou, you want to get some peer reviewed science. And I understand that. And have you heard of Salvatore uh, Pay? 
who is the it, he's the individual that a- actually filed patents for the U.S. Navy. Yes, yes. A- have you looked uh, it, into those? I have looked into those. Um, yeah, that's. I think of those every time I I say to myself, "You see, that's why you can't put it past human ingenuity to possibly come up with something like this." That was going to take and you know, yeah, you know, like that's that's why I I don't subscribe to anyone's story and i don't expect people to subscribe to my story because i don't have any proof (laughs) you know like how do you and this is something that i think it took me a while to learn myself and and it's something that i try to impart on especially experiencers if you have a hard time deciphering and understanding what you saw the people you're telling the story to are having an even more difficult time understanding what you saw. So it's great point. Don't be offended if they, if they kind of leave the conversation, especially if you're animated and adamant about it, don't be shocked. That they're like, yeah, Dave over there. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, maybe, like, maybe, yeah. Maybe he I, needs well, to I, talk to somebody. He needs to yeah, talk to and that's, that, and maybe yeah. you do need to talk to somebody, <laughs> you know, like, right. Like yeah. when, when you look at Gary Nolan's st- uh, study mm-hmm. and this is part, this is the part that really just where I start getting like, I don't know, uh, terrified is the right word, but I'm like, oh man, I hope this is not a mental illness. But when you look at what Gary Nolan, psychosis, is, you know, or, or, or part of the brain that is wired differently but that runs common in people who see this versus people who don't, you know? Um, And so that's what he's saying is that when they looked at military personnel, they found that a certain number of people who saw the phenomenon had a certain brain abnormality. Um, Whether you want to call that a deficiency or an efficiency, I'm not going to go there. Just, there's no point. But sure. the point is that the brain is different and the people who had the experiences had the same thing. And that's just early, you know, studies of it. And so when, you know, a guy who has an entire wing named after him at Stanford University says that, um, you know, I, I go, OK, maybe, maybe I, what I saw was just a a manifestation of something that's wired incorrectly in my brain, or maybe I'm wired incorrectly, correctly in my brain. And what I'm seeing, I'm supposed to see. Um, And, and maybe it's it's a wiring that eventually is going to make it into every other human. I don't know. To play, to play devil's advocate. There, there are some that would um, jab back and say well you know the system's been the academic system specifically has been set up so that there is a constant suppression of any type of evidence that might come forward what 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 do you say to that when people say that show like show me the the evidence of suppression and cover-ups well john greenwald has said he doesn't have a definitive answer on what any of this stuff is but he's pretty damn sure that there is 100 percent proof of a cover-up like they're covering something up. Something is not being told. There's the truth that's being hidden. Um, what the extent of that truth is, I have no clue. But something, there is a diamond in the rough. There is a there there when it comes to this, this topic. It's just trying to put a handle and an understanding of what that there there is and trying to weed your way through all of the stories and... Um, hearsay that yeah. surrounds that diamond in the rough. Um, so, yeah, man, I, 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 I don't know when I, I, I don't know when I've said 2023 is going to be a very, very interesting year. Mm. I think because by then we will have had another public UAP report. We'll have had the established office and budget, new UAP office and budget for that office. Um, we'll have hopefully had some more eyewitness testimony, maybe some more corroborating evidence. Who knows? Maybe another uh, New York Times article kind of thing. Sure. 
Um, I think we're going to have a new NDAA that are hopefully going to find the flaws within the new office. NDAA, not National Defense Authorization Act? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so that's where the budget for the new office came from, is from that, that defense bill. And so writing into that bill the first time, the things that you want to change about the office going into the next fiscal year. You know, like, so if you see that, oh, this, you know, we're trying to get uh, information from the CIA and the CIA is not giving us what we want. Okay, well, the CIA's budget gets cut. Mm. And uh, what do we have to legislatively write to make sure that this office has the power and the authority to get the information from the CIA? I'm just using the CIA. Sure, as well. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so things like that are going to be interesting to watch. Um, and I think, uh, you know, in 2023, when all of those things are settled and written, you know, I think we maybe get public congressional hearings in 2023. I think, um, you know, the, the conversation is going to have shifted gears, <laughs> right. You know, to use that analogy, it's sure. going to, because every time, you know, again, like there is, it seems, and people, I feel like across the board would agree with you. Like there seems like a buildup. It feels slow for us in the community because we're looking at it every day. And we're, we we're just, looking at the metadata. You know, of it yeah. All. We're yeah. looking at the metadata. Yeah. We're, we're really in the trenches of it. Whereas, you know, public. people who haven't even looked into this are like, well, wait, what happened? You know, oh, well, uh, speaking of that, I, I know yeah. you, don't, you don't have too much time left, which is why I did want to ask you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to reference a podcast from I think it was a year, two years back with Lex Friedman and Eric Weinstein. We now know that Eric Weinstein just joined the uh, Galileo Project officially recently. Um, Eric Weinstein said he goes and I got to give him the credit with all respect where it's due. And he said, look. I made fun of UFOs for years because mm -hmm. I was told it's all nonsense. He goes, but Lex, he goes, now he goes, I got to apologize to the UFO community because I don't know what to believe now. Now, yeah. the, he brought up the other side of it, which is that the problem with all the, the possibilities, like you said, Lou, of it being all the above, is you create this um, in, in in, in it, unintentionally and indirectly, you create this thing of, well, if that's the case, then anything is possible. And then you have the crazy cults and then you have the this and the that. The, the argument is that you'll never be able to fully stop that. I guess, could it be like you said, looking outside of the UFO community, people that go about their jobs every day and don't look mm -hmm. at things like us, they're tr the government's trying to mitigate that through this rollout? Well, I think the tr government's going to be what they're really going to try to mitigate. <laughs> If I was a government, I'd the be knowledge? trying to mitigate. No, the people oh. who, the extremists, right? People who get this information, tie up all of their family in a minivan and drive off a cliff or into a lake. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, or yeah. or um, you know, or decide. You know what? I'm not going to work. I'm not paying rent. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Like, why would I? This um, money I system's think... fake. If this Zeta reticulin alien got here by lunchtime from you know. 10 million light years away. Right. You know, so I think those are the things that I think they're really going to start looking at mitigating. You know, um, I think, I, honestly, I really, really do think society's at a point where I think it would just be in, like everybody would go to work the next day. That's it. I really yeah. do. Yeah. I, I really, really I, I do. Hope like, I think case. people, I, I, Who's going to say my, my rents or mortgage is not due this month? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like who, yeah. Who's going to fall out of this system? See, I, I that's think it'll the be thing. A, uh, if there is, a, a, I'm sure there'll be a percentage, but it's going to be a very, very small percentage. I think a lot of people are ready for this information. Yeah. Um, my biggest concern and the thing that I've really sort of had, um, real questions about is like my, I think of my sister and her kids. How does she explain this to her children? Mm. You know, when does this, how does this get integrated into school systems where this is a, a, um, a known fact? Like how did, when does this make into the science books? How do you, you know, my sister, she doesn't watch the hunt for skinwalker ranch because it scares her 
Mm. It's like, what are you kidding me? Like, this is like the least scariest show in the world. But the idea of something uh, uncontrollable that can can cause some real visceral damage without you even seeing it to either your friend or loved one or even bring it home with you. Right. Uh, really freaks the hell out of her. Like so, she, she really like she, and so she just chooses to ignore it. Like she doesn't even look at it. I was like, right. oh, I never thought of it as scary. I never yeah. thought of it as, well, how do I explain? Because, you know, my niece and nephew are now at the age where they're, they're little adults. They're talking and articulating questions and, I find it. How do you explain it? Let's just say hypothetically. This is, yeah, yeah, this is the problem. If like, we're, if we're food I don't to another species. I don't want to be, well, not even so much food to another species. I don't want to be pumping their heads with something that I don't 100% definitively know is true. Mm, so when 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 Dr. Eric Davis, if I'm not mistaken, said to Mr. Greenstreet that he goes, the problem, Steve, is that a lot of this, they don't know how to legislate or how to put into legislation. A lot of this science, they can't quantify at a legislative level. I mean, could it be something as as simple as if they have the tech, let's just say to walk through walls and that comes out to the public, how are you going to make a rule? Okay. After 8 PM, nobody can walk through walls, right? That whole, is that what you're sort of getting to as well? Not even so much that just the idea of, you know, for us to have a paradigm shift of that level, it would mean that the entity has shown itself. Mm. It has made itself 100% clearly known and has decided that it's now going to be a part of our everyday lives. Right. Then it becomes, uh, (laughs) you know, take it or leave it, do whatever the hell you will. But this is everyday life now, whatever that means going forward. Um, But I still think people would still have to pay bills. People would still have to go to the grocery store. People would still have to get milk and society would still have to function. But what does that mean post disclosure capital d you know like that's right. like disseminating i mean like it's gonna be <laughs> we can't get the story straight on a virus right yeah how are we gonna get the story straight on this now okay now you know to- like that's why i can understand the government's trepidation to be like <laughs> no way to Don't play yes touch it I, I like that train of thought because to play devil's advocate, what if, and again, this is that whole what if thing, but right. if, if, like you said, we can't get a story straight on a virus. So if that's the case, speculative territory, if another entity maybe said, okay, they, we got to put the whip these guys into shape because maybe their species, it could be again, the CIA that made it deliberate for us to not to find out where it came from. So could it be that angle as well? Like a, a, a non-human entity says, okay, it's time to change the paradigm of the masses of this species and put them on a maybe more. They're not going to do that through handshakes and dark rooms. Right. Right. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. You know, at least I don't think so. Right. You know, I don't think they're going to go to the president and be like, okay, this is like, they're going to go to devil's tower and have the, you know, the whole music <laughs> playing. Like, I don't think it's going to go down like that. You know, if that is the intentions of these beings, it, 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 I would think, you know, it'd be something very similar to like V or um, yeah, like V Sorry, where basically v? they're, they're, yeah, it's a, it's an a, a, like a series of an alien invasion. Um, oh, yes, yes, from, yes. I think the, the 80s. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, basically they transmitted to everybody's consciousness. Like, right. This is who we are. This is what's going on. This is where, this is how it's going to affect your daily life. Like it's, it's essentially a, a, you know, like a conscious download, I think would be the best way to communicate what's happening. I don't think it would have to be through a president and backroom deals like this idea of, you know, our government has a deal in place with the aliens that they're allowed to go through walls and kidnap people. They're not going to ask us to run experiments on us. Do we ask, you know, the chimpanzees, you know, hey, we're taking you. We want to put a needle in your arm because we want to look at your blood and compare it to our DNA. Right. You know, we never ask the chimp that we just strap it down to a board and we take its blood. You know, <laughs> same thing with the dolphin or a whale or a shark or any other animal that doesn't a dolphin like 
you know mm. these are supposedly intelligent species and you know we just we don't ask them right but that, you, know, you know that might be the difference between these higher conscious beings and and us where we don't respect the intelligence of these other beings whether it's a dog an octopus mm -hmm. a chimpanzee but theoretically these advanced beings that have these crafts that can uh, do interstellar travel maybe operate under what can be called the prime directive where they, they have respect to get the sovereignty consent. yeah 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 so you know i that's interesting because you know a big part of the work that uh, generation does uh, is looking into the you know like the griotta treaty with the extraterrestrials that had the agreement behind closed doors with president eisenhower and that there mm -hmm. are these treaties and there are actually uh like agreements between the the nazis and higher conscious beings to receive technology in exchange for you know whatever whatever the conditions were or that uh, mj12 under the eisenhower administration uh got an agreement with these grays to exchange like abductions for technology so that they actually did have to ask not i don't know if they had to ask but there was some I, sort heard of like all getting those, consent. i've mm -hmm. heard all of those theories mm -hmm. prove it right fair yeah. enough yeah. yeah you know prove yeah. it prove and that's, it yes so uh, uh somebody that dave has mentioned a uh, ross coltart um is you know uh a journalist that is he, he, he's very skeptical and i really oh, lou, appreciate lou, lou knows ross he's spoken okay. with ross yeah, yeah. Right. So I really like his approach and perspective of it where he doesn't believe any of this, but he's like, but the evidence and the testimonies are suggesting to me that at the very least, the governments know a lot and they're not telling us and there's something going on and it's a big mystery and let's try to figure it out. But yeah. he's not subscribing to anything. He doesn't believe it. He's never seen a UFO. He's never seen an orb. So and like, yeah, I like how you bring up the uh, like the fishermen experiencers, just mm. the very, you know, are low, lower level people that have just seen strange things. And they're not uh, a scientist that can conduct some experiments to get it peer reviewed and have it proven. They're just yeah. somebody that saw something. And you even mentioned, I don't know if that was an actual experience you had at a 13 year old birthday yeah. party. I wanted to ask about that. Speaking yeah. of which, yeah, if yeah. you could explain, please. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's what really happened. I was at a, a birthday party. It was, uh, you know, eight nine o'clock at night, and we some like I live. I, I'm I'm from Florida, so there was in the neighborhood I lived in. People lived on two three acre plots of land, okay, some bigger. And so this particular house that this girl lived at was on a um, on one of those plots of land off of a dirt road, and it's still a dirt road actually to that house. Could I ask what year this was and how old you were? Three okay okay cool. okay cool cool um and um i'm actually gonna go back to the house at some point and film uh Ooh, cool. talking to the people that still live there and see if i could track down some of the people that were at this birthday party but um yeah so you know there was a girl in the field looking up at the sky so me and my friend went over to look at to see what was up and we're like what are you looking at she just it's up and there's this orb you know um a light and i couldn't really tell what it was almost looked like a blimp and then the next thing i remember it's sitting over the cow field and um and uh it's behind these trees that along this dirt road and it looks like the best the closest thing i've seen to it that i could compare it to is the gulf breeze US ufo Gulf um, Breeze UFO? Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Uh, um, if you Google that, you come up with a bunch of images, and that's kind of what it looked like. It was very nuts and bolty, but it had a white, a bright white center with like a green hue. And the, the weird thing about it is that it, yep, yeah, just like there it is, the one on the left, top left. Oh, uh, top. Um, you know, or even the one right next to it. Uh, it looked very, very similar to that, where it was just like this light that wasn't giving off any light. Um, and it was two tiered like that. It had two, it looked like two, you know, an upper deck and a lower deck almost. Uh, it had a little white light at the top, just like that. And the, yeah, so crazy. you saw the, you saw the structure uh, of it. Yeah. I saw the structure of it, you know, saw the, the, the bending of, 
what looked like metal. So it goes from the sky above you. How rough, roughly, I know this a long time ago, but how many meters above would you say? It was that house is right above or right below the flight path of Fort Lauderdale International Airport. And so it was between the where the planes are coming in to land and the ground. So I'd say, you know, half a mile. Wow, that's close. You know, pretty close. And then Oof. it was, it was, uh, I'd say three or 400 yards away when it was over in the field. Um, and, and sorry, you know, j- just to clarify, yeah. it's in the sky. And next thing you know, yep. boom, it's in the field. The, yeah, that's how my memory of it is anyway. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure there's parts of it I'm just forgetting, you know, and the thing with this memory also is that it's a now a 20, almost 28 year old memory. And so, or it is a 28 year old memory. And so it, it, it's changed. My memory of it has to have changed. Mm. Uh, but the, you know, that's how I recollect it is that, you know, and the thing about me is I'll never forget this is when I saw it in the field, it was starting to move. And so I wanted to get a better look at it. And so I ran toward it. And when I was uh, rounding a corner of a fencing, to get to that dirt road that had a whole bunch of trees lined behind it i was running and keeping my eye on it the whole time and as it started going behind the trees it went behind one tree and then it didn't come out of the other tree the other side of it whoa like you thought it would and it was just gone could it have been a a a, well maybe speculation but maybe shot up real quick to the point you can't even possibly Mm. i don't know i don't remember anybody saying it shot up okay um and there were other witnesses there at the birthday party yeah it was a birthday party it was adults children um one in particular i still have contact with and i don't want to give his name out um, but he's he was my best friend at the time he's the one who invited me to the birthday party um you know i'd say he's a very evangelical extremist so i have a hard time sometimes having conversations with them because it always goes into this creationist mm. discussion and i'm like dude the, the earth is older than two thousand years just get out of my face <laughs> right, um, right. so like that's the only problem <laughs> with going back then but i that what's hilarious is that the house that this happened is less than a, a five minute walk away from where my parents live right now so it's, it, it would take nothing for me to go knock on the door and it's just going to Florida and doing it and seeing, you know, if the people that live there are the same people that were having that birthday party. And I don't remember the girl's name because I didn't know anybody there. I was, he invited me. I was just tagging along with him, you know? Um, what are the so, odds? Yeah, it was it just crazy. And so that's why even when like Dr. Gary Nolan talks about, you know, maybe it's or compares it to maybe it's just a, a wiring in the brain thing. Well, then that means everybody at the birthday party also has the same wiring or same mental disorder or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's where like my my. You no, know, that's where it's just I got to constantly question it. Well, and Ross talks about the uh, potential that the tech that the ETs have this sort of technology that interferes with human consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's the possibility that you were all beamed something and it was yeah. like a, a group experience, but yeah. who knows? I mean, I like Ross. I've talked to him a, a few times and <clears throat> the only thing is, is that he, he does say a lot of things that sound sexy and fun but there's no sources to it. There's just, this is what I've heard. And he's very clear about like, this is just speculation as far as I'm right. concerned. In fairness, you know, I yeah. Don't, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not subscribing to this, but the stories he does tell are just like, whoa, dude, where did you get that from? You know? <laughs> and like, that's, that's when he gets that's into, wild. and just to, uh, just to say, that's when he gets into the whole, well, I can't say, because these are my sources. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, like, it's like, part of me wants to scream like this is the greatest story of all time screw your sources let's go Mm. but you know they're not my sources you know i can understand i just understand like how you want to uh you want to have this modicum of professionalism uh when it comes to this but i mean that's why you know it's also like a part of me is like you know 
the the thing that is true is that the government isn't like this you know boogeyman it's not like one thing that thinks in yeah one way. where everyone's and, in a room every you know, yeah, yeah yeah rubbing their hands together and you can't see their faces you just see their suits and yeah <laughs> smoking you know yeah and it's like that's not how the government is man it's made up of a ton of individuals that have different ideas different ways of thinking and that's why i always was never really afraid of a coup because whoever is running a coup in this country would have to convince every branch of the military and their generals that this coup is is valid <laughs> mm. you know like good luck dude you gotta have a lot of a, a spectrum of different ideas on whether or not a president should do a coup and a good luck getting all all branches of the military on that idea i think it's going to be a pretty hairy situation for whoever's proposing it um but but you know like yeah it, it's just it doesn't it it it, it for me, I don't even know. I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? With respects to, to to proving it, like having proof and, you know, it being right in front of our faces. I mean, right. Uh, like, for example, I just quickly uh, accidentally opened my Twitter app and saw yeah. uh, right now in UFO Twitter, someone said Robert Bigelow needs to please elaborate when he <clears throat> mentioned on 60 Minutes a handful of years ago what he meant mm -hmm. by it's right under our noses. Uh, right. We got even uh, what's his name there? Uh, James Fox said uh, a handful of months ago, he was told by someone who put big money into this, we're assuming Bigelow, that <clears throat> James Fox goes, if what this person told me is true, then wow, it really has been right in front of us. But yeah. what's I was actually told this too by a couple people uh, that claim to be in the know, not saying they are, but yeah. again, what's this thing right under our noses that we're missing? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I think it's and Lou is also hinted at that as well. And I think that that's maybe what we're going to we're getting closer to is the realization that there is something right under our noses it's literally right. sitting right next to me. It's in the same. It's in the rooms we're all standing in right now, you know, like. Right. And and, um, you know, when Lou compares it to monsters under the ocean surface, um, especially, you know, again, explaining what a whale looks like to somebody who's never been on a boat um mm. it sounds like a monster but then you get the understanding of what whales are and and what they do and communicate how they travel what they eat how they digest what one looks like when you dissect it you know you get a, a, a real good understanding okay this is a whale right you know? and then the fear of it goes away nobody really fears whales anymore as like sea creatures that destroy you know cruise ships you know like well if i could say really quick it's funny you say that because i was thinking this last night in in preparation for our chat here that if like i just went to go uh i woke up from <clears throat> from from bed and i went <clears throat> went to go get a bite to eat and i got a, i have a couple of cats and i'm like if i'm an et from outer space for some somewhere else wherever it is and i'm here for the first time and i saw these two cats i'd probably freak the hell out if i didn't know what they were yeah. Right. I'd be like, what are these two little things walking around yeah. the room and jumping, you know, making little noises. And so I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 And also just this idea of like this hubris of, you know, like they would somehow be able to communicate with us um, or uh, us communicate with them is to me so funny, you know, like uh, we can't, we have no idea what dolphins are saying and we've been trying to crack that code for, forever um you know i love the the idea of like ender's game you know where the 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 bugs that we're at war with we're just trying to say hi <laughs> their version of hi accidentally destroyed an entire fleet of ships right you know? um and yeah. that wasn't their intention and because they can't communicate with us it leads to a war that eventually destroys their species um and so you know, I know, yeah. I know, yeah. man. I, well, it's, there's the, that, that's why I try not to give anyone answers on my show. And I think that's why mm. I get into trouble with sometimes on um, UFO Twitter, because I'm not looking to believe anything. <laughs> Right. I don't want to believe anymore. I want to know. Are you saying let's work together collectively and find common ground and then work from there in terms of process oh, of elimination? That's, that's the idea. But I mean, right. you know, I've been really at this now for almost a year where I'm, you know, 
And it's just, it's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's pretty damn hard. There's always going to be a segment of this uh, discussion that nothing's ever going to be good enough. Mm. No show, no breakdown, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. no, no, um, uh, grassroots campaign <laughs> no right. it's gonna be ever good enough no idea you know i was just hilarious like people were like um you know when i did the first big phone home they're like this isn't gonna work you know you need to get like kurt russell why don't you reach out to kurt russell i'm like yeah i fucking have like right. it's kurt russell you gotta dude. start like, somewhere though you know yeah. what i'm saying like you gotta start somewhere you know we have to we have to like this just doesn't happen overnight usually festivals take years sometimes decades to grow like just go get just yeah just go get demi lovato okay yeah okay why don't you go get demi lovato if you think it's so easy you know yeah. i like this isn't my baby you could go out and try and get her for the event if you want for your own show or if you want to suggest her to come on mine if you know her so well like if you want to know the truth six months crazy. ago six months ago that's how i viewed uh you guys in terms of like nah there's no way i'll get the ucr guys on but hey you, like you said though it takes time though granted it takes yeah, time it takes time but you also like and Dude, I'm nobody. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, I'll you've come made... on your show anytime you want. Like, right. here's the thing. And I tell this to people all the time, man. Like, you don't know how much somebody will help you till you ask them. Yeah, it doesn't take much. It, but, but this is the thing with ego, though, right? When it gets in the way of a lot of that. And then it gets petty. And then it gets, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know that nobody in my team has become no one's ego is blown up. No one's become petty. Everybody's super cool. You know, and it's just been a simple, hey, do you want to do this with me? And it's like, hell yeah. Yeah, hell yeah exactly. I want to do this with you, you know, and, it, and it's a good relationship. So it, it's like they, you know, it was uh, I'm so proud. I never even thought of it. But like Kurt Jarmungle pointed it out. It's like, it's unbelievable that you guys get together four days a week and talk about this mm, yeah you know? and, and on like a schedule right know? and you put it out and you commit to it um and it's good you know right like, it's just like wow thank you never really thought of it that way because you know um, what though i gotta true. say it's it's, you guys are focused on you know what happens though and i say this as a compliment when you guys focus on the work and the pr producing uh, regardless of what people think of it, good or bad, you don't really have the time to look back and go, whoa, we're actually doing something pretty neat here because you're so yeah. focused on trying to, you know, do all that. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. But I, I know you got a, I know you got a jet. Uh, if you could please tell our audience uh, where and how they can find you. I'm pretty sure the yeah. vast majority of them know, but again, never hurts to bring it up again. Yeah, um, no problem. Uh, well, thank you, first of all, Dave and uh, Riel. Yes. Real, yeah, real, uh, and I appreciate you guys having me on the show. It's been fun. Um, it's been a conversation. I, you guys, if you, yeah, if you like what I'm saying, uh, come check out the unidentified celebrity review. Just Google it. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel. Uh, we live stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, uh, although tomorrow there's no show. Um, but yeah, we'll be there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for sure. Uh, and yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, Lou Angeles. You can find all my stuff uh, on Twitter and all my links are there in the link tree. So pretty, pretty easy to find me. Awesome. Thank you so very much once again, man. And for all those listening or watching out there, we'll catch you all next time. Cheers.